you might not want to listen to this episode. I know that's not the sort of thing a host of a podcast is supposed to say. Marketing people aren't going to like this. Charles is going to have a fit. (laughs) But I'd rather be honest with you right out of the gate. First, if you haven't listened to our other episodes, you don't want to start here. We have released Buddy Reed book discussions about The King Killer Chronicle, Mistborn, and The Lord of the Rings. We also have broader discussions on things like our favorite characters of fantasy and episodes of Friends Pitching Fantasy, where we pitch books to each other to determine our next Buddy Reads. If you're curious to try our podcast, I recommend you start with one of those. They're much better introductions to our show. This episode deals with us recounting our stories from a trip we took to New Zealand to see the sites featured in the Lord of the Rings films. Without the context of already knowing and hopefully caring about us from previous episodes, you're probably going to feel pretty bored. Second, even if you have listened to our other episodes, I think it's only fair to warn you that this is a bit of a strange format. It doesn't do a lot of the things a classic episode from a fantasy podcast is supposed to do. And if you're looking for a continuation of our Lord of the Rings buddy read, you're not going to find it here. On the other hand, if you'd like to learn more about us and our experience together on Awesome Trip that included sites from Lord of the Rings, this episode has a lot to offer. If you love jokes, banter, and nonsense from lifelong friends, if you're curious about the whole story behind things we occasionally mention, like Charles almost dying when we climbed Mount Doom, If you want to be introduced to Derek, the mysterious third member of our fellowship, which we call the M Crew, well, then this episode might be for you. song I was, I was blocking it out <laughs> <laughs> i was well, listening to uh glitter freeze. <laughs> glitter freeze yeah. welcome everyone the gorillas. worst gorilla song don't the copyright stri- strike that <laughs> <laughs> sorry charles <laughs> <laughs> welcome everyone to the third installment of a very exciting series within the friends talking fantasy podcast my name is charles with me as always is dylan and returning for this very special segment is the third member of the m crew he is derek hey friends hello so we are very excited to have him and we're excited to continue our conversation into our journey uh that was our new zealand trip to sightsee uh, lord of the rings and just the beautiful countryside of new zealand Hi, friends of friends. It's Dylan. I know Charles doesn't bother to introduce me anymore, but I t- I introduced you right at the top. You have to no, but it's supposed to be like, and here's Dylan, and then I say something, and then you say, and here's Derek, and then he says something. It's so they the can hear our first. voices. That's the guest the point. comes first. Sure. Hearing no, it's fine now. If I was you getting to first. the guest, and then now it's you. And people need to know who Derek is. Why? That's he's fine. Here. Do they really need to know who I am? They, they should. Need to know. The it's not about the it's not about who goes first. Derek can go first. You just gotta be like, and Dylan. And then I When you guys him. tour, Dylan's gonna make sure his name is on the uh, billboard first. On the marquee. <laughs> Derek, you're, you're you're ruining my spot. I have to pretend it's not an ego driven thing. Oh, okay. I okay. no, it really is about the voices. They hear the voices at the start. Uh, anyway. Welcome. Mm-hmm. 
I assume you've heard my voice already because Charles will throw that. You might not want to listen to this episode, beginner. I can. <laughs> so, yeah. Got to oh, throw that before even the intro, I guess, on the on the second and third story time episodes. Yes. Yeah, so we took a break from recording those first two. We're back. We're ready. We're fresh. We're going to record the last bit of the trip here. I'm pulling it up. All right. So last we left off was our very exciting Mount Doom story. Um, does anyone want to make another comment on that before we just jump right into day five? I don't think we discussed a little off mic, but we uh, nothing of real note. <laughs> it's just me being That's a jerk. <laughs> very true. <laughs> And then let's just get right into day five. So we hiked for 14 hours. We drove for four hours. We had the best McDonald's meal ever made. And we're in the hustle and bustle of the big city in Wellington. Wellington has a lot going for it. You know, it's home of Weta Studios, which is where um, the actual film studio that did all of the production and special effects and stuff is located and they also got to film a lot of stuff here too which we'll, we'll get into um this is a wellington sign yeah there's a so you can check out our youtube yeah if you're not already watching this on youtube and you're you listening should. and you're wondering about the pictures that we're going to keep talking about uh, you'll be able to see that on youtube but if you can't then there's basically a Hollywood sign equivalent, but for Wellington, right? <laughs> right. So that's here, which I didn't remember the sign. It was only in the pictures you guys sent me that I... I don't remember this at all. Oh, really? At yeah. all. Yeah. I don't that's remember it at all. basically what I remember when I think of Wellington. All I can remember <laughs> is the sign. Was this the day after the drive? Or was this that... I don't remember I, I, when this was. This could yeah. have been like when we were on the ferry this could have been when we first pulled up there. I imagine it was the, like the welcome sign from when you get off the ferry. It would be my guess. I'm just surprised I have no oh, recollection did. of this at all. So we're in the South Island now, Charles? No, Wellington is the southernmost point of the North. Oh, okay. Yeah, because we have some uh, cruise ship pictures. Ferry okay. pictures. I believe so. I, I have a couple. So. Oh, oh. So oh, we'll Mark? skip it. It was a big ship. It was cool. <laughs> Good coffee, a lot of people. It was nice. Well, we'll get Great there. That's, that's, oh, wait, that's... I was on a different ship than you guys. We'll get there. <laughs> okay. <ahead. laughs> I was ahead. like, it was so nice. <laughs> oh, that's why. Because he's like, you're very ahead. tranquil. <laughs> Best part Spoilers. Of the <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. Okay, <laughs> sorry. My we'll, bad, my we'll bad. We'll get there. Bad. That's one of the exciting stories we got to get to. Yeah. But before that, we spent a whole day in Wellington, and one of the things we did was go to some of where they did some key photography for Rivendell. And this is kind of the marking point. I had to like look this stuff up online and get like addresses and like, um, <laughs> like uh, GPS points to track some of these things. But this one made it nice and easy with the sign. Um, so here's a couple, come walk this path to Rivendell and it's an Elvish as well. And they take a note of like, notice this tree when <laughs> you're in Rivendell right now. So and then they had this cool archway that they left up, a movie prop they just never took we have down. Derek for scale with this. There might oh, be. we have an everybody for scale coming up. But it was just a cool prop. We have a lot of oh there's there's me. You I'm are to, you were trying Charles to be so scale. cool. Oh, we, <laughs> Derek for scale, yeah. Yeah. There he is. I don't know what <laughs> what's going what? on there. <laughs> Look at this. This is just a picture. Who took, who yeah, took that picture? picture? Not me. I can tell you that. <laughs> that was okay. me. Uh, I, what's <laughs> up with? I don't think I've ever looked better in a picture in my entire yeah. life. Yeah, you're welcome. Send that, that was to me. me. Yeah, you look good. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. You were my muse, my flame. Yeah, you. Uh, and then took a picture Dylan. of my crotch. But... Uh, I look excited. Okay, this was one of those trees, and everyone posed. <laughs> <laughs> and and then, by the picture that Derek looked worst in <laughs> that he ever could possibly no, look. No, to be fair. What am I, I doing here? You You're know. trying to hold up a bow and arrow. I remember this. I was like, dude, that's not how you hold a bow and arrow. You got to have your hand like way higher up. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, You're going to shoot yourself I've... in the foot. <laughs> Dylan Reed's fantasy. He doesn't okay. play anything. Okay, yeah. so this is uh, Hobbiton Woods now. This is where. Um, yeah, 
No, this is the picture that I look worst in. <laughs> this is where we, uh, this is where they find the mushrooms. This is just a short video of me saying that. It's not very exciting. Like Here's movie? where the hobbits slid for mushrooms in the first movie. Around here somewhere. There it is. <laughs> so, Wonderful. very exciting. Um, there's one of those famous ferns they have. So, the silver one of, fern. Yes, right. Something interesting about when we went to Hobbiton Woods was, again, I was, they gave very vague descriptions of where things were, and you couldn't quite tell if you were in the right place. But I remember as we were looking, trying to find some of these scenes, uh, I a tour going. group actually came through, and we just kind of like overheard the tour group and listening to the tour guide um, explaining all the stops. And then we went back and retook the pictures so that they were actually accurate. And you could tell we, that the tour yeah. guide was giving us some weird looks when we were just trying to eavesdrop on them because well, it was Derek clearly had that some giant sort of walking stick that was twice his size <laughs> if you remember <laughs> maybe that was the weird look so yeah. that didn't help yeah Derek Derek insisted was... i remember being so embarrassed but Derek like <laughs> well it's because down. you were so so embarrassed i had to I know. go it was for a very Derek moment <laughs> it was yeah so Derek's walking around with that giant walking stick and i remember <laughs> I remember just being like, there's no way that's actually helpful for him in any way. <laughs> no, like, it was a detriment. It was annoying. But it uh but it made Charles uncomfortable. But so. twice as annoying for Charles. And, oh yeah. And that's what this yeah. is about. Yeah, so that was a uh, huge that I I remember that very clearly. But thank goodness that Torga did come through. We would have never found Oh, we're skipping ahead. There's so this we is what the, this. We this is what the <laughs> studios This was behind a tree. I mean, we have tons of pictures of Hobbit. Yeah, feet, keep rolling, Charles. Let's get good you not? back to... Um, where but they just where said, are the pictures of us? It, it's coming up. Yeah. I know I have them. But these are just some cool movie props from the studio. They had a studio tour, but we didn't take it. Yeah. Um, so for the listeners, yeah. cool yeah. right now it's a bunch figures. of figures. Uh, action I got a, um, a production quality map that I, of Middle Earth. Yeah, the I map, I remember have. that. Yeah, I have it a, framed on my wall. It's amazing. I've That's seen it. Awesome. You, 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 got, you did a nice job framing it. Yeah. Well, it's I didn't cool. frame it. But... Well, you picked Michael's nice frame. framed it, yeah. <laughs> they picked a nice frame. Um, it, yeah, it, no, it was, they did a great job. It looks super um, cool. That's just a tree. Um, trees, tree, tree. That's more Rivendell. More Rivendell. I guess these were more out of order than I thought. Um, oh, so this oh, is like Derek a... Derek for scale. A nice. Derek for scale. You're about Aragon height. So there's this... <laughs> So there's this pole, I don't know what to call it, like a wooden pole thing that has different Lord of the Rings characters depicted on it. So you could see where up on the pole each character's height was, or I guess actor. No, it'd have to be character, right? Because like the hobbits were way low. Yeah. So right. you could see how tall you were compared to the characters. And you'll see with me, I'm just a little over Gandalf's height. Mm -hmm. um, I get up to like Aragorn's chin and Derek's up to maybe his eyes. His eyes. Yeah. I don't Charles, there's not one of me. Oh. Well, Charles, it's because you made the pole look small. <laughs> You're so tall. <laughs> I was like, "Where's mine? How come I?" How, how come it might be. Uh, maybe so it's tall. on my. Yeah, maybe it's on my phone. You can see on that leg list is a head taller than. Yeah. Than I didn't Aragorn. Know. Well, also how that accurate, accurate is this pole? Yeah. yeah. No, this is this is canon. <laughs> I believe, no, because oh yeah, maybe okay, who knows? Who knows? But okay, there's some more hobbits in woods. Fully Here we go. Okay. Oh, so, Charles, I sent you a picture. Groups, yeah. Okay. So, if you so put that on camera. Okay. Let me let me try here. Hold on. Because I'm not right. just being a. It, well, I am being an idiot, but I'm not being. Gonna do a well, little. There's so many of them. magic here. <laughs> How did no one take a picture of Derek with a stick? I don't know. I too don't embarrassed. Know. Didn't want it recorded. No. If I have, trust me, I wasn't too embarrassed. If I have all of Here's these. Here's a very pictures. pixelated version of. So this tree was a movie prop. So that was why it was so hard to find because it was just a ledge on this trail. So it was like, where, which hey, Charles, portion explain of ledge? what scene we're, we're referring to. So this is a scene from the Fellowship of the Ring. 
the hobbits have left the shire but they're being pursued by the ring wraiths and this is a scene where they can sense the ring wraiths coming down the road and they hide underneath the um the tree and then that's when the ring wraith like starts sniffing around for them like right above them but he can't see them because they're hiding under the tree and uh, it's a very famous scene in both the books and the movies and the movies is kind of iconic because of how like this is your one of your first like up close shots of the ring wraiths and they're very kind of scary looking of any evil really yeah mm -hmm. so this was like the first high stakes moment in the movies so very famous scene and i was very excited to know for certain that we had the right one because for a while we were there and i was kind of bummed that it wasn't obvious and then the tour guide was like and here it is and i was like thank <laughs> you thank goodness and so that's why we have we have a ton of pictures from, from and we spent a long time looking for it and i think we took a couple There's of pictures, some in the wrong pictures at the wrong one this is yeah. the wrong one this is the right one that's so okay. you can see that where we're just like so epic and then there's derek doing here that's the wrong that's one. Wrong. it looked better but it was the it wrong looked one. better but it was the wrong one this is the wrong one wrong one wrong one wrong one wrong, so wrong. charles is right. going to cgi in the nazgul <laughs> in post. Oh, wrong the but oh so right at the same time <laughs> i hate this <laughs> Uh, don't right. uh, you know when i said check out the youtube video please don't do that please just listen this is really a podcast <laughs> taking an audio format you don't need to see so this is the cover your cover for this uh, derek help no. me remember to make this my next yeah, zoom I'll background. You. <laughs> uh, why would i do this <laughs> okay so that's the right one that's the right one yes this is the right one yeah this is the right one i'm like oh. no i'm scared i'm very scared it's good acting. Thank yeah, you. Well done. This is oh, that was one. another wrong one we found. That was another wrong one. This is the right one. This is the mushrooms, yeah. which that is the, the right one. The right one, yeah. So, yeah. It's, well, it's too bad we didn't have someone who could take taken a picture, a group picture of us all crouching under yeah. it. Yeah, it was just that. us and the tour group, and there yeah. was no way I was confronting that tour group. Yeah. That we were, like, stalking. Oh. Yeah. So, um... This so that was Rivendell. Dirt. Now, what's because the next picture is very important. So we spent the whole day in Rivendell and in Hobbiton Woods and in Wet to Cave, right? Those were the three things we did that day. And then we had the night to ourselves, basically, in Wellington, one of the few places where things were open at night. And we're trying to figure out what to do. And I remember we were in the hotel room and like, this was the first time we had like a TV. And so we're also super sore at this and point. Like it's I exhausting. literally cannot bend my knees. Like my legs are scared more stiff than they've ever been in their life <laughs> more stiff the than they ever photo, so. there will be more photos to show how stiff they were but it was insane and so we had other stuff planned but we were like dudes like we, i just we were flipping through tv like our motivation was dying and then it was a jackass that came on on tv you guys <laughs> yeah and we yeah it was just, jackass we were getting so into it we were like this is amazing <laughs> like i haven't seen this in forever we were just having fun watching it we were getting hungry it's like where can we go fast so we can come back and finish watching the movie and that is where we found the noodle canteen yeah shout out to noodle canteen shout we're out big to fans <laughs> oh my god that was a life changer because it was like walking distance from our hotel and it was just an insanely large portion of delicious yes. like it was really good too. noodles yeah, yeah. We hadn't had a moment where we were just like lying down, not moving, like eating a meal in forever. We've been on the go at this point mm -hmm. for a very long – we're 24 hours off of <laughs> that horrible Mount experience Doom. of Mount Doom. So we're just like, oh, bro, we just – to be able to have the whole night to ourselves is kind of relaxed. I remember I took a – I just soaked in warm water that night. I was yeah. like, <laughs> I need my legs back. Like my muscles are dead. So I took a bath that night. But, man, those noodles were epic so good i mean i was <laughs> i was starting to say this and i stopped because i realized maybe better for the the episode when we were off air it's like it's weird the things that end up sticking in your mind and you end up remembering from right. trips like this right and for me eating noodle canteen which i remember we got for a very very reasonable price we got these huge portions oh, it was so cheap. great it was like well seven made. new zealand dollars for yeah like which insanely is large amount of maybe noodles. like four dollars us <laughs> or whatever and 
just lying down and watching Jackass with you guys. And <laughs> I mean, you know, that's what we were. We were there to see the Lord of the Rings stuff and to travel New Zealand, but we we're also there to, to yeah, hang out yeah. and be friends and get this time together. And that's something that sticks out to me in my head is one of the best memories of the trip is just Agreed. hanging out with you guys in the hotel room watching Jackass and laughing <laughs> when we were so exhausted <laughs> right. from this Mount Doom hike. You know, it's day. funny you said that. I kind of wish now I had asked you guys to make like a top 10 like memorable oh, moments. Oh, that would, yeah. Because for sure yeah. Noodle Canteen would have been on yeah. my top 10 somewhere. Lower on the list, but it would definitely be on there because yeah. it, like you said, it's amazing what you remember and it's like digging into those greasy, delicious noodles was yeah, uh, was like etched, like burned into my memory forever. <laughs> like sometimes you remember something when you're four years old. It's like I'll I'll have I'll have this memory scorched of being in the hotel room eating, just devouring noodles. I mean, <laughs> something we could have easily been doing at your place back in New York. We didn't have to travel <laughs> halfway around the Although, world. Although to, to be it, fair, but... I don't know if I know a noodle place as good as that one. That's no, fair. Me neither. Just, you know, without checking Yelp or anything like that, just picking one. Right. It was very And also, good. like, we had to walk by so many bars, and there was so much nightlife that we hadn't, at that point, experienced, because everything closed by sunset yeah. everywhere we were, besides Auckland. And now we're here in, like, there's mm. bars and stuff, but we were so dead. Like, we were yep. like, should we go out to the bars or something? It's like, I can't even bend my legs, dude. And then once we got our hands on these noodles, it was like, this is what we're doing tonight. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the noodles and television. <laughs> then that's it. So that was our first day in Wellington. I think we had, oh no, that was it. So we had like a full day. I do remember. Um, there was something else that we could have done. Um, the Path of the Dead, which mm. was a short drive, <clears throat> but we had a late start to the day and we called it quits early. It was like, look, in a short walk, short drive, we got to see Hobbiton Woods and Wet to Cave, and it's like that was and Rivendell, and then it was like, do we want to? It was one of those things. It was like we had ambitious plans, and we knew that going in, and it was yeah. like, do we want to keep adding stuff on? If I was fresh, if this was day one, we probably would have done it. But <laughs> literally being not even twenty four hours off of Mount Doom, it was like there's only so much you can take. We're halfway through the trip at this point. Let's just take a pause and kind of enjoy each other's company and things like that so we didn't make it to the paths of the dead next time maybe but wellington was a gorgeous city oh yeah, something nice. we, we didn't talk about when we were in auckland we we totally didn't talk about the um coffee shop slash anime that, manga store i i was gonna bring oh, that up but i wasn't I sure where that. that was that was that was in yeah, auckland i think yeah that place was really cool it was like an a, ma a manga cafe and they had like cool Gundam figurines everywhere. They had a library <laughs> of stuff you could buy. Manga figurines and an espresso machine. It was cool. Yeah, yeah it was really cool. And really good. Cool place. That's the first we figured out how to order uh, New Zealand coffee there. It was like you get a, a, a tall black or a long black. What was it? Or um, I, You see, I don't remember. A long black. It sounds, sounds familiar, though. Right? Yeah. It, I don't remember. Because we, I remember we ordered, like, could I get a medium coffee? And they were like, you mean a long black? I'm like, yeah. uh, sure. <laughs> and it was really good. Like we said, the coffee in New Zealand and is really mind, good. And we had been up for 30 hours yeah. traveling. We were downing coffee that first yeah. day. So, I think it was espresso. Awkward. Maybe it was espresso. Yeah. With water, and that's what made it longer short. Mm. It was like, you know, something like that. Gotcha. Yeah, well, yeah. Like I remember. But... Yeah. Auckland sticks out, too, in my head. We, we kind of glanced over this as a place that would be pretty cool to live yeah oh yeah i mean that was like a place where you could actually like do stuff yeah because in rotora you're pretty much done at like you know six. 9 p.m yeah 6 <laughs> p.m you could like, hit the pub we hit a pub over there i remember it wasn't open it was late food but they yeah, don't no, open, it wasn't late. open late yeah i just remember we were reading the brochures on the plane going in it's like the legendary nightlife was like <laughs> Queenstown because it just yeah. didn't because it was open because it was open to like something yeah, twelve thirty but, yeah. but yeah most places everything closed super early but we also went to a really good Indian fusion uh, Asian in fusion Auckland, restaurant right? in Auckland. fusion in Auckland yeah, yeah that was our Where first I had, meal yeah I had like some of the spiciest curry I've ever had there and it was awesome <laughs> it was really it was good a, it was I a cool restaurant was, too yeah food was yeah. great throughout this trip 
Yeah, it's because that so one time we stopped a lot of different for lamb somewhere, and I think Charles got sick. Yeah, well, well, did that I, happen? I don't remember that. <laughs> we stopped for lamb somewhere. And maybe you didn't get sick, but like you didn't like it. I got New Zealand. I remember getting I lamb remember because that. it's their thing. I, yeah. yeah, I mean they have so many sheep there. I'm like, oh no, I got a lamb burger somewhere that was really good. I That's remember getting lots we of got burgers. lamb multiple times, but one time we got it at this small town. Maybe it'll come up. We got it at this small town that was one of the few just like towns that exists on the long stretch of <laughs> road, and then it was just a guy. I I, re I remember it was like undercooked or something. Maybe Charles did wouldn't eat it. Oh, I was yeah. worried of getting sick. I don't oh, remember that. Yeah. I don't remember that, but it's possible. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, the cities were cool, and I, you know, there's lots of cool stuff that happened on those days, but. Before we get there, we, we, we finished Wellington. We got to see a lot of cool stuff there. Wish we could have stayed there longer, but we did get almost two full days there because um, we spent a lot of time in Wellington on this day as well. But this was the day we took the ferry. Oh, we don't want to get oh. too far ahead. Whoop. We took the ferry from Wellington, to, which is the southern tip of the North Island, to the northern tip of the South Island, right? It's like a three-hour ferry ride. But I was trying to remember what happened that we got separated. It was me and Dylan got on a I ferry and then Derek missed the ferry and had No, to no, no, I had a different one? ticket. Oh, you bought a wrong ticket. Right, I bought we my- We also showed up way late where- oh, we, when they, we, we were the got last there, ones on there. They were like, we were well, wondering where you guys were. Like, you guys we were, about were the to last leave. ones. I was on time for mine because mine was a different boat. Oh. Yeah, so I was, maybe we thought Everyone had my ticket, and we were using that as a time. I, I don't remember. No, Something I think we were awry. pushing it anyway. We were always oh, kind of pushing it in the mornings, but because my boat was definitely after we yours, barely made it on the ferry. Charles and I embarrassed ourselves. Like when we, <laughs> we showed did. up, they were like, "What are you doing here?" At we got this that time reaction a lot from ferry. like hotel managers and stuff. People were like, "What are you here so late?" <laughs> it's like. Bro, we're trying. <laughs> like we're trying we our came hardest. Far away, we have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, I apologize for the. Yeah, we inconvenienced a lot of people, but they were always very hospitable and nice and accommodating. So the Kiwis were great throughout. Oh, oh yeah, everyone Much, was super we nice. We probably everyone was like, "Oh, you're on holiday. Yeah, you're on holiday. <laughs> That's great." <laughs> I love the accent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we got the ferry over. And Derek got the later one, and we met up on the south side. We got it was only like a car. half an hour. I think. Oh yeah, it wasn't yeah. bad. It was enough time for us to get the rental car and wait for you and everything. Yeah. It was not a huge deal. It was just like craziness getting up to because at the same time we thought we were going to be late. We also realized we we're going to have to be separated, and it was right. like a whole crazy thing. But it all worked out and got us here. So one of the things that we had scheduled in my mind when I was originally planning this trip and it was on all Lord of the Rings trip. I'm like, you cannot have a Lord of the Rings movie trip experience without taking a helicopter tracking shot of the New Zealand landscape. Because in my mind, that's like half the movie is them yeah. having a camera mounted to a helicopter just driving through New Zealand. And it's like all these like wide, like running shots of just beautiful scenery. So one of the things that I tried to work into the budget was a helicopter tour. And then when you guys came on, it was like, you know, it's not that much money. Right. Three to, ways. It wasn't horrible. No, to ride a helicopter, a private ride on For a the, helicopter. Sure. No, and this was my number one. This was amazing. This was the yeah, coolest thing. This was, I, yeah, Derek, I could tell has having the greatest time because we get there <laughs> and it was like this, this picture. Cause it was like <laughs> a garage full of helicopters. And the guy was like, who wants to help me? Like, slide it out of here and Derek was like all over like grabbing the tail and like pushing yeah. it out of the thing it, it was, was really so cool. cool yeah and because it was just this dude with a helicopter <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, was... maybe we're moving in the direction of telling this part anyway but when we got there it was an overcast and yes so not we're having a lunch, visibility right? we dead. get off the ferry it's a crazy drive because you have to go up and down this mountain in the road like zigzags it takes like yeah. an hour to go hardly any distance we finally get to have lunch and then we get a call from the guy who's like, yeah, dude, it's pretty overcast. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to go, but come over and we'll, you know, take the weather, but just keep in mind that if it's too foggy, we can't ride. Um, so these might be getting ahead of ourselves here, but um, 
this is just a fun video of us. In the well, that's leaving. That's some serious eyebrow action. Charles. Yeah, yeah, that's us taking off. Oh, that's just leaving. Yeah. That's leaving. Yeah. That's leaving. So let's keep going. Look at, so, look at Moria over there. Moria was great. So, oh, here's us maybe taking off. Wow. But um, he was a total bro. He was such a nice guy. He was like, we'll fly out there and we'll try and land. And if we can, I will. And you can see, like, it looks clear here. But the thing is, fog okay, kind of creeps in the into front the front of this guy. <laughs> And we're hitting it off with this guy. Oh, he was right so now. cool. Oh, he, he was, was so video. Nice. Like, we're having a good time with him. We're chatting it up. Everyone's laughing. Yeah, we had lots of questions. Like, you know, they, they kind of, sometimes they assist the fire department and stuff. And he was telling us about the different, explaining the different, like, scenery, like the tree farming and things like that that were happening. And overall, it was super, right. super cool. And, I mean, just look how gorgeous the roads are. And, yeah. How lush you can the see in this is. that it's, a, I mean, look it's at an that. overcast day, but right. that's a beautiful shot. Such a cool shot, yeah. Amazing. It was a <laughs> look at that beautiful <laughs> piece. Um, we just saw so much cool stuff, and then Moria, Moria. So movie fans might remember this setting. Um, this is the exit of Moria. So this is the scenes where they just escape and they're like grieving over uh, Gandalf finally. Um, What's super Spoilers. cool about this, yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, what's cool about it's called Mount Owen, and it's um, some of the oldest rock in New Zealand. And they say uh, it has a glaciated marble, uh, which is what you see there, which was such a distinct look from anywhere else that we had been. Like, if we hadn't gotten on this helicopter yeah. and flown here, we would have never seen this. The stark white stone and the green moss was such a unique yeah. like descript like setting it was so unusual when we had seen a thousand different settings in this country already this was another just absolutely gorgeous one you can see how foggy it is also this also yeah, sticks so, out. go ahead derek oh well this is a perfect example of it um so he kind of maneuvered us around uh, charles could you go back to that last one uh one more to the yeah he into like under the clouds in certain valleys and found a back way up to the landing spot. He well, tried yeah, really hard. What, yeah. You know, here's he went out of his way to find a landing spot and he did find a pocket. So here's what I remember of this. Okay. I remember him leaning over and saying like, Hey guys, like, I, I don't think that I'm going to be able to land it. Like as he was getting the sense of this and seeing how overcast it was. And we were kind of, you know, we were having a good time with this guy. And we we're kind of like, yeah, man, like, it's cool. It's cool. Like, we get it. Thanks so much. We're, we're glad we even got this experience. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah. Uh, you know I'll, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Exactly. Yeah, he really and went out of his way. I have some great pictures that show exactly you have what he the, was able to pull off. So, yeah, he's takes us this roundabout way and ends up, yeah. So he lands it just in this, like, <laughs> from what I can understand, not where you're actually supposed to land the helicopter for one of these things. Well, and I, also like, we, I think we were we, supposed to like have lunch up there or something. We were supposed to be able to spend a lot of time up there, but yeah. we really were only there for like 10 minutes. Well, because we had a short window. who's like, clouds are coming back. Walk around, check everything out, but we got to move. Exactly. He was yeah. super accommodating. And he took <laughs> oh, he took that picture of us. I, yeah. I didn't realize that we, this could be the episode picture, by the yeah, way. Yeah, we have some great pictures. and But that, you can see how foggy it was and how much of a bro he was to, to, to help us out. I mean, it's pretty scary when you think back. Like, uh, it was so, And it was beautiful up there. I, I wasn't really thinking it that way when it was happening. But I knew it was a big we deal. We were never like he'd not chosen. Safe. No, I never felt while it was happening that it was like getting dangerous but probably not by the book what he did and i knew it was something like <laughs> unusual that he did when he as someone who'd had years and years of experience doing this he got out the copter and he was taking pictures of where the helicopter was. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was so that taking picture, pictures of his yeah. own landing yeah let's yeah. go back to that he was like going around yeah. Taking shots of the helicopter, like just being in, he was like, I got it. He's like, this was yeah. cool. Right. He's <laughs> like, I gotta show he... the bros back at, a, at the at the helipad. Exactly. Like he was thinking, 
oh, I got to show people <laughs> where I ended up landing this thing. And that's when we got a real idea that we had I mean, a look at all that coverage, that cloud coverage yeah. experience. And it, it just added to the atmosphere of this. Like I do on one hand, wish we had more time to explore, but I um, was also like, these pictures are incredible. Yeah. And I think we ended up in a more scenic spot than usual. If you like took Cop this there. guy, yeah, took his yeah. tour. Right, because we yeah. weren't on a trail or anything. Like you couldn't. No, really he just found a look spot. Look at the tree like, farm. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Super cool. That was kind of a theme of our New Zealand trip. Was uh, <laughs> very rarely did it go the way it was planned. I, uh, I mean, we hit pretty much all our agenda items, but yeah. oftentimes things went a little bit different once we were there than. <laughs> we yeah, I mean, expecting. five days in, we only missed one item so far, and we only miss a few. And it's just because we chose not. It was like we don't want to overextend ourselves. It wasn't yeah. even like we we could have done everything. It was just yeah. we decided not to make ourselves crazy trying to do everything. Well, Charles, when you planned this thing out, I remember we were looking at it, and the word we kept using was ambitious. Yeah. And um, you were basically saying, hey, this is if we – are able to swing everything and what we and it was like it's unlikely that we'll actually right. one be of the things i was very very stuff. careful of because obviously i i felt obligated to like almost for sense like i got to make sure these guys have a good time because this was my idea you know is it a big investment to go on this trip and i'm the one in charge of pretty much planning it i wanted to make sure that we had a good time and i knew like i also wanted to make sure we did as much as possible so i was like i'll plan it as ambitious as possible but like you said i stressed a bunch of times like we don't have to do all of this and i'm conservative with rounding up and down half hours to make sure yeah. that we aren't making ourselves crazy it's possible but put your put your mind there we're moving non-stop the whole day so it's like we knew that going in i think we were all kind of prepared and for the most part, we didn't have any issues. I know there was one disagreement that we had coming up on where to go, or maybe it was there where it's like one of us wanted to do Revendell and the other one wanted to do Paths of the Dead. I actually I think, think that, that was, was it. it. That was I think it. Derek yeah. wanted to do Paths of the Dead, and we were like, forget it. <laughs> right. And I wasn't like, uh, shoot, I, I, it was my preference, but I didn't, you know, yeah. it wasn't my, you know, both we like, of them it's had Rivendell, no real bro. It's Rivendell. And then Hobbiton Woods, like that tree scene is so yeah. iconic. Paths of the Dead would have been cool, but there was nothing like movie iconic about it. It just would have been mm -hmm. cool. So I think that's ultimately why you were outvoted on it. But yeah. that was yeah. like one of the few times where we had to like make a decision. And even then it wasn't like a whole thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I'll anyone say, else want to say anything about that day? Not uh, necessarily that day. I'll just say on um, what we were just talking about that, I think we all went in with a great attitude toward this trip, which was mm -hmm. that same attitude that got us in trouble with Mount Doom, which was, well, I mean, we're here. We might as well. <laughs> right. um, and w that's how we were basically able to hit everything except that one agenda item, which was, it's incredible we even made that happen, I feel. Two, actually. Two. Whale watching. Remember that one? There was a beach. I think that was always oh, yeah. like that a... Was always like a yeah not gonna yeah. happen if we can there's a lot there, of we'll stuff in there. rotora that you had researched that we just were like we're probably not gonna do yeah. any of this and i, I think, think that was the me best right of, that research yeah, the, the yeah that stuff i have a document somewhere where oh, yeah, i came that up separate with, was it christ going down to christ church yes it, that we just never did I there's another beach city it. or something it, one i remember city we just never went to i remember i took some chunk of the trip as like I'll research this one part heavily and come back with a few ideas. I think we just wanted to make sure we considered everything. Like it was important to me that you guys also did some research and contributed some ideas. I didn't want to like Shanghai the whole thing to be Lord of the Rings stuff because yeah. it easily was like the original plan was me going by myself and doing these things, which it would have been three times as expensive. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that was the plan. But you no, know, it went out great. So let's move on to this. Again, we were talking about favorite days. Like the helicopter ride was cool, but I loved Rohan so much. To me, it was one of the best parts of the trip. Maybe not like the best, but way up there. Uh, I so, wanted to point out that yeah. you didn't include in the slideshow the first selfie I ever took. 
and it was a I good selfie. That. that was a sick picture, and I'm just saying. Well, you, you didn't said. send it to me. Send it to me now, and I'll throw uh, it in. I don't think that Your yeah, first ever selfie? My first was in the helicopter. <laughs> huh. I, I, I never I, had a, a time I where I was like, that. oh, I, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I saved it for a good... Uh, we can <laughs> tell from watching that it was far from my first <laughs> when yeah. we were in the helicopter. So this is Rohan. So there's a place called Mount Sunday, which is privately owned land that was used to film like... Um, it's called Edoras. It's the main city of Rohan where the king lives. And the owner of the land is just super chill and lets you, you know, he keeps the gate unlocked and you can go in and take pictures and stuff. And so these are his cows. There's Mount Sunday off in the distance. You know, it was just such a cool walk. It's such a cool piece of land. Um, and this is like at the base of it. And I mean, you can't really tell, but when I went back and watched the movie again, it is, that's it, no question. It's so cool. They had built all these buildings. And then the palace was at the end of this road, like directly in front of the picture, right? Way down the line. And there's just a scene where Aragon's like running up it, trying to, tell the king to like yeah. light the beacon or whatever and it's just such a cool area what is let's see what this video is Rohan. glad i played that okay. nice so super so cool. to the right is where the palace was in the last picture on, on, on the top right there top right yeah okay yeah, I mean, it, there was like, there'd be buildings on either side of this road, and the road would go all the way up to the top. Yeah. Super cool. I mean, you go back and watch the movies, it's like, no question that this is it. Derek's looking cool yeah. in the skyline there. Um, yeah, this is just a really awesome location. Really Me easy to get to. Yeah, as you guys. The curb. Um, <laughs> just a cool shot. The filters. Oh, so this is where oh. we realize ourselves forever. Um, so there's just a place you could like people were etching their initials and stuff and there we are m crew we should have wrote r.i.p donnie <laughs> <laughs> we should have wrote um ftf podcast <laughs> yeah no m crew that's pretty great so what was this thing that we carved our initials i don't into? know some it, sort of like weather vane thing it might have been for wind speed maybe that thing spins um I don't remember why it was there. For but, those who can't see this, by the way, everyone was carving their initials. Oh, yeah. We weren't we being like we vandals. Yeah. There's no. a ton of initials. Did. Hundreds of initials on this. Thing. Yeah. So we just added ours. We would never have thought to do this without seeing no. uh, all these trailblazers like Brams and uh, Peterson, who had already. Spelled, weird, spelled with an E and two <laughs> Ts. <laughs> So, yeah, no, this was good. We had the option to go to plenty of fields, but they charged to go in, and we could tell that it was just a wide open field. Yeah. And we were like, we don't, and like the pictures look kind of like whatever. You know, it, it was a good choice to go here. It just seemed this like a beautiful. tourist trap. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Rohan was uh, so iconic, and the pictures are amazing. And I really love this place. This is Dylan doing with your Elven I see. <laughs> 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 and it was just oh this was it's just such a cool there's the river that splits yeah, around the valley little island the river was yeah, cool it, it's beautiful yeah this was some, worth the trip you're on like a mountain in a valley you're at like a peak in the center of a mountain valley it's yeah it's, and a it's river literally Rohan, you know? <laughs> it's so cool it was just a really awesome uh really awesome location when you see the tracking shot in the movie those the mountains aren't even CGI'd in. That's what it looks like. Right. They CGI in the town on top of the the what is it? Mount well, they Sunday. may have built some of those buildings on it, but oh, I'm sure. But I mean, I meant from the helicopter, you know. But oh, yeah. the the landscape is actually really there. It's that cool. This was my first selfie ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the cows for a selfie. Yeah. <laughs> I t I saw a cow and I thought it was time. It was. Time we saw a bunch of cows. Selfie. So yeah, we had about a you know, a good three hour drive, maybe longer, about five hours actually to Queenstown straight from Rohan. So we drove to Rohan, we saw it, and then we drove to Queenstown and we pretty much spent the day in Queenstown. And I kind of just brought all the Queenstown pictures into this day. Does anyone have anything they have to say about Rohan before we move on? Nope. Nope. Just a really cool day. I love those pictures. 
and I love those scenes in the movies now. Like going back and watching those scenes, having been there, it's just really adds to the experience for me. Um, so we got some me famous. Want to rewatch the movies here, Charles? Oh, I know. I I, I have the Blu-rays, but I don't have anything that plays Blu-rays. So I'm like, am I gonna buy some sort of Blu-ray player just to watch these? Probably. <laughs> we'll yeah. see. Um, I actually so... almost watched Fellowship of the Ring last night. I, I right. ended up watching something else, but that was. Uh... Was it because we were doing this, or just? No, I've just been in the mood for it recently. Yeah. <laughs> I usually watch them once a year, but I didn't watch them last year, so yeah. I'm just really overdue. Um, this is another famous scene. This was hard to find. This is the Ford of, let's see, how do they, how do they say it? Bru, Brunin? Ford of, in, Lord, in uh, Elvish, how do they say that? Brunin? B-R-U-I-N-E-N? Brunin? Sure. Um, Sorry, so, Andy. I feel like we're going to get way more pushback for mispronouncing something in Elvish <laughs> than any of the actual New Zealand uh, <laughs> sites. Any of the Maori language is yeah, like, yeah. oh, it's the Elvish that people are going to have an issue with, probably. But this was hard to find because there's the park, but then there's no trail that leads to the actual spot that was used for the film. I had like a GPS coordinate thing, but no signal to get us there. But I feel like once we were there, I just like, this was probably where the studio was up on that ledge. You, you could just, I just knew instantly when we were there. It looked like, right, yeah. It just looked so right. I was like, oh my God, this is it, dude. I, I was, this was one of those, because that's such an iconic moment also where the ring were trying to cross into Rivendell and then the like stream of water horses just take them out and Liv Tyler is like. This is the Elvis. ford where Liv Tyler and uh, Frodo crossed and attempt to escape the ring race on the way to Rivendell. There we go. It was, so that was Listen really to cool. that babbling brook. Uh, yeah, that, that brook was babbling. This is the ford where Liv Tyler... It was raining also slightly. Um, yeah, we got a little wet there. We had to jump around. Oh, yeah. I do. Oh, wasn't there a part where we had to cross by like hopping across yeah, like yeah, rock to, to yes. rock. It was far removed. Like we had to go to a pretty isolated area to find it. I had like when we were in, I can't remember if we were in like the gift shop in Hobbiton or something, but there was like a tour book, right? That had film locations in it. And I like took a picture of the page <laughs> of the Ford because I was never sure where it was. Yeah. And so I was looking at that screenshot of that picture from that tour uh, book that I didn't buy because I'm a, I'm a cheapo. But um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it took us to approximately this spot and then I could find it from there. And it was, you could, to me, it had an energy to it. I knew I was there, you know. For sure. Charles, didn't you grab some water from here? I uh, did. So I have a water collection, and one of my proudest pieces in that collection is uh, is right here from the Ford. So, you know, where do you have... keep? What are you doing with that water? Well, I'm not doing Listen. anything with them now. They're still in the shampoo bottle from the Wellington Hotel, like the sample <laughs> size. <laughs> but I would like to get vials of them. One day, I'd like to make them all into a bracelet to wear. Um, That'd be that's cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, Charles. That's one day, dream. hopefully, you don't. Like, you know, like taking a shower and. You're... Run out oh no, it's up on my mantle much. along with the rock from Mount Doom and the Blu-rays also. So it's like a piece that's on my okay. mantle. Um, I'd like, it, that necklace would be cool. That's cool. It idea. would be like a stainless steel necklace with like um, some kind of thicker glass that has the water in it yeah. of yeah. all the different places. I've been to like a charm bracelet basically. That's the goal. It's because I have water from um, – I have water from Westeros also when I was in North Ireland and then I have water from just all the places I've lived and, and but this is one of the proudest pieces. <laughs> Definitely the, the hardest sure. earned. Um, so yeah, I have water from here. And because uh, I, I don't know, I just sometimes you just feel a weird thing where it's like I have to take a piece of this. <laughs> and we uh, did that multiple times. I have some Moria rock too, I think. I regret not taking the Moria rock. I, I don't remember. think I have more. I have a bag oh, really? of Mount Doom rock though. Most thought, of it was in my Derek, shoes. I I'd be surprised if I was rock. the only one who didn't. Who if I do, it's... Rock. I thought in... you guys took it and I didn't for whatever reason and I regret not taking it. I don't know. I got to look at my rock stash. I have a bunch. I, I, maybe I could differentiate because that would be way smoother. It would be like smoother the, and it would be like a almost you'd white know. gray. Yeah, I got to look. Know. And okay, it would have been true. like, okay, so this is also in Queenstown. This is where they filmed the Pillar of the Kings. I mean, the pillars were CGI, but they're the, like the really tall stone mountains of the two kings holding out their 
holding out their hands, uh, where the fellowship, the last time they were all together, basically paddled down the down the river. And this was the river. This was cool because we were going to visit a vineyard. New Zealand is very famous for oh yeah for wine, and this was like the drive into like you can see on the left side that's the vineyard. Um, all those grapes and everything. So it was kind of like two birds with one stone. It was like, we got to see the, the pillar. And then we also got to go taste some good wine as well. So um, yeah, this is uh, the charred farm <laughs> no, was the name. <laughs> no dogs or sheep allowed inside. says the <laughs> sign. <Proprietor>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, we would recommend this wine. It was very good. It was very good. I remember I was for one... their, I think it's their Pinot. I can't remember. I can't remember, but, but I do remember like wine world was a famous big thing. for certain kinds of wine. I remember I was the one who drove up the side of this little uh, very mountain, precarious. Very mountain road. Yeah. Very precarious. And I was probably the one having the most trouble adjusting <laughs> to the steering wheel on the wrong I'd side. Say that's fair. I think that I took a couple cones <laughs> out one night. That's true. Derek, some road cones. Derek remembers. I do remember, I remember that. Remember you took out some construction cones. I remember a construction worker getting very upset at you. <laughs> yeah, the construction worker trying to get you to slow down threw a cone at your car. <laughs> I don't that. think he threw a cone. Well, he like put it out I, on the I road think... so you'd hit it. And I did. <laughs> Me and Cameron wins. <laughs> I was struggling. So yeah. why we put me driving this thing up this tiny ridge i felt like i was gonna drive us off this thing but you know <laughs> we made it through Mount he, he aced it. He i think aced we're it. gonna make it out of this one alive too right there were no cones but there were no so cones we, had a, we had a great time when we actually when we did finally make it up here even though it was precarious of a drive we did have like whoever was like the person behind the bar letting us taste everything was super nice we got to try a lot of stuff we got very educated in wine one of the few things i brought back as like a souvenir or as a gift for people was wine from here i was more than happy to um buy stuff from that person she was so nice yeah i think i got two bottles she myself was. it was really good it was really good shout yeah, out to charred farms charred farms Are yeah right? i think so yeah charred farm vineyard from Chard Farm Winery, you can see a spectacular view of the Anduin and Argonath, the Pillar of Kings. The pillars were computer generated in the studio, but the river is real, legit, very real. So that was super cool. Um, so this is Loch Lorien. This was also a cool thing. This was just like you, you're driving, you just pull over on the side of the road, and you're in Loch Lorien, the most like romanticized place in all of middle earth is just a pit stop on your a regular drive for someone who lives in queenstown it was <laughs> really crazy um absolutely love this area you know lots of like old trees and moss but like really bright colored along with like the the brown soil was super super cool and we didn't have to go far to get lots of cool pictures here and there's views of what was it Isengard was like exterior shots of Isengard. I don't or remember. I can't remember. Um, where let me see if I have it here. Um, and the hill straight ahead is uh, no, 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 I don't see it. This was also where they filmed the opening sequence of the two towers, which I believe is the scene when um, Schmeagel strangles um, what's his face. Who is the other Hobbit that he strangles and takes the ring from? I can't remember. I'm going to upset a lot of listeners about, right now. Yeah. But um, so that happened. Um, just a really cool, like, beechwood forest. And it, it's a really scenic area. But this was where the famous picture was taken. <laughs> <laughs> so this is another one of these things. So we're looking at the picture where Charles looks like Bigfoot that we've tweeted out and put on our Insta. And we uh we've had some fun communications with the finding monster right podcast about this yeah. one. they do episodes on bigfoot <laughs> so the picture is charles seemingly emerging from the woods with his still sore from mount doom stride <laughs> yeah. and he just about as like much as my legs were capable of bending even yeah. like three days later <laughs> <laughs> and but 
we always have this crop picture of it yeah. that is just Charles like that, <laughs> or we'll put it next to Bigfoot <laughs> like that. <laughs> Charles, you were prepared. We did not run That's through good. that I would talk through it like that. <laughs> well, I was going to talk through how it kind of devolved into yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> but like history forgets that right next to him is just Derek taking a picture of somebody right. else. And it's why I thought forgets to where take Matt a picture. In the same outfit. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of weird too. I why forgot did I we were think to take a picture of this? That's... I don't know. Derek, uh, Dylan took so few photos that weren't of himself. <laughs> So the, but the ones he took of other people are great. This is the only picture, Brian, the whole trip I took that's of y Charles and Derek, right? Is, that's right, very fair. There's not many of the two of us, and this is one of them. And I was like, why are you taking this picture? And then it turned into this, and then it turned into <laughs> Dude, you look so much like Bigfoot. I just like wish you the, put your the other... The is uncanny, man. It's freaky. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> oh man this is a great picture <laughs> i saw it and i was like it looks like that bigfoot picture <laughs> the stride is identical yeah it's but really also like, like the, the gaze at the, yeah, the gaze the gaze and the head tilt and too. the stride and the yeah, yeah the, if your if your resolution. arm was back it would be oh exactly uh, yeah the that's same. the one thing missing if you took it like a second but at least later, it's like angled similarly yeah. it's just in front of me instead of behind me yeah, yeah. it's it's as close as you could do for an unprompted unscripted yeah. picture it was pretty amazing i mean if we were like let's take some time and try to get a picture where charles looks like bigfoot we probably would not have done as well no. as no. we did. You, you yeah. can't just With recreate that. Like, this spontaneous awesome. picture. And the background, too. Oh, so. is this the picture <laughs> I was taking? Like, the background is so funny. It just yeah. looks like the Bigfoot. <laughs> and it's got, like, gravelly rocks. You're on gravelly rocks, too. <laughs> it's so yep. funny. It's a funny coincidence. <laughs> I was looking good, though. My haircut was on fleek, and go. I got that shadow going. Should have had an undercut though. And this, what is this? The picture <laughs> I really took. Is. I think so. In that you know picture, of, the hell how no. meta? I have no idea. <laughs> was this a tree in the background of a scene or something? It was probably just a cool-looking tree in Lothlorien. I, this very well could not be in that same area. This could be a totally yeah. different area. It just I happens could, to be uh, it look looks like, like what it. I'm taking yeah. picture of in the picture of you. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. Anyone else have anything to say about um, the winery, the Ford, Lothlorien? Yeah. Ah, I'm ready to keep rolling. All right. We only got two days left. So at this point, we just decided to post up in Queenstown and just kind of, you know, run this, explore the city. Um, we had some options to travel, like to go to Fangorn Forest and everything. But we're like, that's a two and a half hour drive one way. And we decided not to do it. So these are just a bunch of pictures over the next two days. Like the 10th day was our last day. So I didn't know which were on this day and which were on the next day. So I just have general Queenstown shenanigans. Um, when we had oh, burger, um, that's that a was like a spot. whole ordeal. We had to yeah. like, we yeah. had to like post up for that and wait. A, like we went really late because it's like we didn't want to put up with the lines of which there were tons of lines, but it was good. It was quite good. I don't actually remember the meal so much. I remember sitting in there and like being happy to be there, but I don't remember how good the food was, but I'm sure it was good. I remember sitting down and we've been waiting a while. So there was some sense that this better be good. And then coming away all kind of like, yeah, that was worth it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was fun. We had nothing better to do. We were so exhausted at this point and we were just happy to have a place that we were staying for more than one day. Like this was like one of the first times we weren't, having to drive to a new town it was like yeah. okay we can we were here last night we're here again tonight we don't have to make ourselves crazy and i remember this was another place we had really good ice cream also ice um, cream was great throughout such and a gorgeous there was city. a guy in a rob gronkowski jersey in the middle of queenstown <laughs> <laughs> so weird i mean there's also a weirdo wearing a, a yankee shirt in uh rotura so <laughs> that's fair <laughs> Oh, wow, this is ridiculous. You it wasn't took it a jersey. Of it wasn't a jersey, though. He brought a jersey to That's New Zealand. True. I was just wearing a, a comfy t-shirt. Yeah, no, it, there's a difference. There is a difference. <laughs> but uh, 
here's another so queenstown is just cool because the beach is just right there and then there's a whole lot yeah. of cool buildings like look at that view and we just like, chilled there for a while because it was so pretty i think our hotel is on the right side it's one of those buildings up on the on the ledge mm. there it was more of like a motel thing i remember the hostess there being really nice who checked us in and um, Everybody was really nice. I remember we yeah. were just happy to love to the carries. I kind of remember you guys watching a Mark Ruffalo movie and then oh, being like, I gotta get out of it. The movie was so bad. <laughs> Wait, yeah, but Derek, oh. I remember this. I think it was it was a movie where one of the characters was dead or Mark was Ruffalo dead. was dead, but he yeah. was still in the movie. He was like a ghost. But in Derek, somebody's were we, house. weren't we acting like it was like the best movie until yes. we really missed out? <laughs> yes. I remember being like <laughs> I'm leaving, and I right. went and I like explored more of Queenstown and like some of the shops and things. But and then we acted like, oh, Charles, you should have watched this movie. It was. I was really like, I did not fly wait. halfway across the world to sit idly. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, there's there's two other things of that nature that happened. What two broke girls? There's two broke girls, which oh, we also we all were on. We all watched that. that. So that's like when we were winding down at night. We just flip through the channels as we we're like falling asleep. Oh, you know this what else happened, happened multiple times. You know what and else that was always that on. And it's always two on. broke New girls was always on, and we did not like it very much. But we started to hate watch it basically. But there was and, another yeah. big moment that happened. Do you guys remember? But I remember where I was when David Bowie died. We were in Auckland. Oh, I don't. Know. I was in the bathroom, and you guys were like, "David Bowie has died," and I was like, "Really?" <laughs> and I come out of the no, bathroom, no, 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 no. and you guys were like, "Yeah, it's on the news." And uh, wow. that was in Wacky. that was in Auckland, I think. So that Auckland, Auckland. not in. I'm pretty sure it was Auckland. David Bowie, you will be missed. R.I.P. Huh. Um, but I remember that was a thing. Um, oh, the other thing, a... Derek, we watched. Didn't we watch that movie with the wolves? Like cartoon wolves? It was like called Alpha Omega or something. Like, yes, you we did. This? I, I do like, remember, remember that. that. I remember that too. Charles, you might have checked out at this point. There were a few times that Derek and I were watched just watching. really bad movies that were on. Yeah. But because we were too tired to do anything else. We were like, Charles, you could go walk around, but we're done. Yeah. We're chilling for a little and then we'll meet you somewhere. <laughs> And we want you're right. It was it was the they were on like a train. Yeah, I vaguely remember yeah, the train. Like I don't know. Sounds bad. Uh, shoot us an email or tweet at us if you. At the director of and, Alpha and Omega, you know, hit you up know the what podcast. Movie we're talking about, yeah. So it was just a beautiful sunset in Queenstown. As these two randos were in the way, and um, so yeah, this is just kind of. Um, the last day, all we did was basically fly from Queenstown to Auckland, then from Auckland to L.A., and then from L.A. to New Jersey. Then we had to get on the railroad to Manhattan, and then from there we had to go. No, we went to Newark, railroad. didn't we? Yeah, Newark. Oh, we went to Newark, right. So we yeah. went to Newark, and then we got on the train to get to uh, Penn and Station. And then, Derek, you were hanging out in Manhattan, but Dylan and I got on the Long Island Railroad to get back to Long Island. Yeah. It was a whole thing. That was long. And we got in late, too. Yeah. It yeah. was morning by the time we – well, probably um, more – I think I got in late at night, but you guys, it would be the early morning when you finally got home. I mean – It took forever. It and, Charles, you – when you mentioned the fact that it had been 10 days at the top of the show, mm. I – or I guess the top of the first episode, so way mm. back. I was like, was that only 10 or you're like less than two weeks or whatever you said? Yeah. I was like, that was less than two weeks. Cause it, dude, we, we were in a new city so every much day into that experience that the idea that we did all that in 10 days is, well, I mean, look me, at, I still have the itinerary. But, I've been referencing it all day. And it's like, we had every hour, every day planned. I mean, yeah. we were in a new but city we were every single day. exhausted when we oh, got back. Totally dead. It's yeah. not. I was like, it's not something I would ever recommend anyone no. would do. I would say do it in two weeks. Us. Two weeks. Yeah, two, two weeks. weeks or pick a place and stay there. No, I see. I think you get so I much like out did. of traveling. I agree. Agreed, I agree. Derek. And I have a whole segment after this. There's just one other thing I wanted to talk about really quickly was Dylan right getting before, detained. No, oh, but I forgot about that. that. <laughs> this is a this is a shot of the terminal in Queenstown. It's like that's just every day. Like you look out the window, and that's what they get to see every day. So that's crazy. 
but I'm going to leave that picture up. When I talk about, we were at Queenstown, we were returning the rental car. Do you guys remember this? And they gave us this bill and it was yes, insane. Yes. It was thousands of dollars. It was like jaw dropping, a really large amount of money. I was like, this was not the amount that we had agreed to when we reserved the car, like thousands of dollars different. I was yeah. shocked. And so like anytime, and I'm going to tell anyone this to, when they're traveling and they get a, like a messed up bill like that. And all I did was I went up to the um, person behind the counter and I was like, can you walk me through these charges? That's all I said. Not like you overcharged me or what's wrong with these charges. You're like, I'm not paying this. I was just like, can you, can you walk me through the charges? And she's like, well, this is this, and this is this. And, oh, you know, I don't know what this is. And she like, couldn't explain it. So then I was like, well, what do you want me to do? And she, without me even saying anything, she was like, you know what, let me go through this and then we'll send you a bill later. And I was like, it's going to be insanely expensive, but whatever, yeah. whatever. I don't have to pay now and I can go home, you know? <laughs> so I could yeah. just, and um, what ended up happening was they sent us a bill that was even lower than what we were originally quoted. Wow. Because they screwed up. We ended up, up so saving yeah. a ton of money. Yeah. Like this trip what <sighs> ended up being wow. not that expensive at the end. Like I remember right. we had the budget and by far the most expensive thing was the airfare. That was like a third of all the costs, yeah. maybe even more than a third. And, um, yeah, we saved hundreds of dollars in uh, yeah. what would have been over thousands of dollars. Over I budget. totally forgot. Dude, I remember being like having that like, oh, snap moment. Like when they, I saw that invoice, I was like, it was like $3,000 or something insane. Right. I was like, what? But it, I mean, it was a rental car for 10 days, but it should not have been maybe 1000 Yeah, most. and we discussed what the price was going to be in advance. Yeah, so, yeah we yeah. had a whole budget. And like, it was one of those things where you, in advance you booked it and it's like oh well that changes from the day you booked it to now the rates change or whatever i'm like well walk me through the charges and she was like i don't i can't explain anything past the first couple hundred dollars yeah. <laughs> like she was just not able to and then thankfully she let us go without paying anything at that moment and then they sent me a bill later for way I, below our budget i we remember you following up later like now it's coming too and being like yeah. guys <laughs> the good news <laughs> Yeah, it's great news. Like we ended up being way under budget for that trip, which was amazing, and it was all because of that rental car. And props to Charles the Dachshund of the group who <laughs> we didn't even mention this. Part of what you did is you had some spreadsheet where you would planned out how much everything we we're going to do was yeah. going to cost, basically. Oh yeah. Range, and you had how much you expected the trip to be with. And and you kind of did the way you did other things where you're like, this is pretty much a max we end up spending. And we we were planning for that, and we undershot it. Yeah, I don't know, that it was amazing. So bad. We, we under budget. spent less. Uh, we were yeah. under budget. So, yeah. Under budget. Props to Charles for all his work on Well, you know what? To, to go halfway across the world like that, it was super expensive. And I, I just really wanted to make sure everyone's expectations were checked at the beginning. I didn't want anyone to be surprised when we got there or have – you know, a bad taste in their mouth afterwards when they get a huge bill. It's like, hey, can you give me five hundred dollars for for hotel yeah. fees or something? <laughs> it's like, no. Here's every single thing we could have spent money on. And I, even looking back at this itinerary, I'm like, this itinerary is the bomb, dude. Like, I could have been a travel planner in a past life. Yeah, it's really good. And the yeah. way that you, you know, the binder. You should have had a picture of the binder. Charles's binder. I still have is it. It's, it's so good. The binder is somewhere. Uh, it might it must be in a box in my parents' house, but yeah. I I know I still have it, and it has all of the like um, brochures and things that we picked up along the way as well. So now it also has like all those keepsake things in it. Uh, but yeah, that binder was badass, dude. And every day I would just flip the page and like we we did that day, and yep. then we, we had the address of the place and like the phone number and our you know our confirmation number and like for everything. I just didn't want to be in another country without you know. And we didn't have cell service either. That's right. So, yeah. So beautiful. So anyway, like we were saying about the rental car and what we were talking about leading up to this was the best way to see New Zealand by far is by car. I mean, you got to hit the road and see this country and it's insane. And part of, oh, what, what is this, by the way? <laughs> oh, there's I, a picture of me holding this thing up to my, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you so mean this? A mil, it's like a milkshake of some sort. And when did it we looks get like this? it's the size of restaurant my row, head. Maybe. Was that restaurant row? And I'm holding it up looking just as amazed as you'd look if you had a milkshake <laughs> the size of your head in front of you. It's in this goblet. Do you remember where we got that? 
It no. looks like Restaurant Row, maybe, or Queenstown. Like, hard to say. Oh, I remember it was so good, though. Uh, and then here's the urinals. One of the things <laughs> okay. you specifically said to include this. So <laughs> No, I just said that that is was... Is this the urinals or because of tennis? Oh, I There's two <laughs> things going on in this picture. So first of all, any listeners, I am fully clothed in this picture. There's no one else in the picture but me. Um, it's all safe for work. And <laughs> there's two things going on. One is that urinals in New Zealand don't have barriers between them. They're just super and they're close, close together yeah. to each other. I mean, you could basically be touching knees if you were just standing <laughs> normally next to another person and you're yeah, both using touching urinals. For sure. <laughs> they're very oddly shaped compared to what we're used to in the United States anyway. So, uh, yeah, and the lack of barriers and space between them is, is alarming. And then there's tennis going on in the uh, <laughs> on the Have TVs. we established you're a big tennis guy on the show? Oh, I kidding? doubt we've established that. There's no way Dylan hasn't nonchalantly brought up tennis <laughs> within, like, the, what, 20 hours of audio you have? I do nonchalantly bring up tennis, right. but not in the context of... <laughs> I don't of believe it. Once, once. I'm gonna, see, I'm going to go back and listen to these now, and I'm sure I'm going no, to I'm gonna timestamp when <laughs> tennis comes up. Tennis comes up at the end of The Witcher series episode the uh, the our coverage of the tv show but i just bring it up because some either person or bot made a comment on <laughs> one of our insta photos where they start talking about like because we just quoted something from mistborn that one of the characters says about faith and then there's this long rant about I don't want to call out the person, but there's a there's a thing a person wrote that was long that happened to mention tennis, and I just I brought that up. But I wasn't mm -hmm. talking about tennis. Anymore. Well, so for anyway. listeners to understand, Dylan in real life never stops talking about tennis. Oh my god! When we were growing up, that was like, it was like you 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 would like you would go up to anyone in our high school and be like Dylan, and they'd be like, oh that that tennis guy, and yeah, like, yeah that's him. So, and he okay, wasn't well, even that good. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Dylan, Dylan was very good at tennis. Still is, I think. He was fine. <laughs> that's a great. That's a great comment. So, for the listeners to actually know what's going on here is, though, probably what Charles said about me being the tennis guy, at least in our grade, is probably true. Like, if you if you ask someone, because I. I don't know how to say it without sounding like I was bragging. I was the best tennis player in our grade once uh, Dr. Evan moved to Florida. <laughs> He's way better than me. But after that, it was, it was pretty much I was the best tennis player in the grade. So it's kind of what I was known for. And, but I was not always talking about it. And because I was so <laughs> low-key about how good I was. High-key. Yeah, 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 okay. Uh, You're either the tennis guy or the highly disruptive and class guy. <laughs> That's probably true. And depending on who you ask. It depends on who you asked. I was highly disruptive in class. And in a lovable it, sort of way though. Uh, depending on who you ask. Well, depending who you ask. Yeah. yeah. Some people I was loved or hated. I was like a class clown. So there was no people, in between with those. Yeah. Like some people really did not like my antics but you guys appreciate it and that's what matters <laughs> and then the tennis thing though is like these two just act like the only thing i'll talk about is tennis and they've been making a joke it's not that i'm joke, like obsessed though. with tennis oh, please, I talk about. go back to any so, high school not records that exist and it's dylan and it's tennis yep. and that's about it he also would have like three tennis rackets in his trunk. At so all many times. rackets, dude. Okay, but like someone who actually plays, all you actual tennis players out there, person who commented on, go. The, on the Insta thing and said that stuff about tennis, you know. If you are like a real tennis mm -hmm. player, having three rackets is not mm -hmm. weird. Okay. It's normal. Okay, okay, great, sure. great, great. Let's get back to New Zealand because we're, how did I, we get? He's still talking about tennis. You got him started, but can we go back and talk about idea. New Zealand, please? <laughs> like I don't know, I was, guys. I, kind of I had this. About we we just went from talking about the, the urinal situation to tennis way too quickly. So let's bring it back. 
I gathered all the pictures that we took just out of our car window on our drive because we drove literally the yeah. whole country, Auckland to Queenstown. That Shout out to whole... Honda. Shout okay. out to Honda. We drove the whole length of the country. We got to see all of it. And it was a really awesome drive. I mean, just looking at all these pictures, I would highly recommend anyone that visits oh, the country to 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 um rent a car and really go out and explore the road because it is a sight to behold. It's super cool. Just everywhere you went, you felt obligated to like pull out your phone and take a picture. We'd be on the road for like five hours and it's just yeah. this for hours. <laughs> Eventually we were making jokes. I remember be- making jokes because like, I'm kind of desensitized to just the serene beauty that is this right. country. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, there's another beautiful, breathtaking, picturesque landscape over there. Like, oh wow, a mountain valley and a lake. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, it's so insane how amazingly gorgeous the country was. I just Compl- so beautiful so beautiful looking back i think we've even stopped a couple of times to take a picture we did, for yeah. sure i mean you just had to pull over and, and film and take pictures and it's such a great way to see the country and just the diversity of colors and yep. scenery and look at all that livestock Cows. those are like 10 sheep per person yeah it's yeah i think <laughs> i looked it up at one point and i think it was eight times as many sheep as people people in the country <laughs> and yeah, you can see that. a lot of them in, in this picture if you're watching the it's YouTube. funny because sometimes if they had neighboring farms they would spray paint the the sheep, sheep. yeah to mark who's was who's <laughs> and just let them roam free range yeah. i mean where even is this is this Rotora? i think that's that Rotora. looks like rotora yeah. yeah it was beautiful beautiful colors and just a pile of rocks even are gorgeous <laughs> Yeah, just so some amazing. That looks like Queenstown. Yeah, the last one was the vineyard. This was for the vineyard. Oh, this was Chad Farms from the door, probably. Yeah. Um, there's that tree again. It's a great tree. That tree makes a lot of appearances. <laughs> Dude, there's so many duplicates. I tried my best. And then I think yeah. this is where I ended it. Um, yeah. yeah. That's the end. So, yeah, that was our whole trip. We made it in an hour 20. That's excellent. Um I love this trip. I reminisce about it often. I'm so glad we pulled it off, that we were all at the same place at the time we conceived it. And I'm so glad we have all these pictures. And now I'm happy, thrilled that we have this recording of four years, almost five years later, looking back. It's hard to believe. It feels long longer than that. <laughs> really? Yeah, I mean, it, it was a lifetime ago. Right. You know? 2016 was not that long ago, but it feels we've like that living, long ago. We've all moved since then. Yeah. Well, like, this is kind of, it's so interesting, the 10 days thing, because I can't think there's another 10 day period of my life that is as momentous <laughs> an occasion as, as this yeah. 10 day period was, because I don't know, this is such a this was such an experience and we crammed so much into that so and it was such an undertaking too i I never planned a cross like an out of country trip before and we you know hadn't i mean we've been in the same place for long periods of time but that might have been a record of being in each other's personal space for 10 straight days i think so no escape we only have one car (laughs) (laughs) so the fact that we survived that and we're, we're reconvening five years later is, says something. Yeah. I'll say this does have something of a feel of this last hurrah thing that we did while we were all still together. Because probably within six, Island, yeah. w- within six months, I'd moved to Florida, I would guess. This was January, and I think you moved in the summer? Yeah, relatively early, I would think, in the summer. Like ju- around July 4th, I think I was down in uh in florida so probably yeah within six months i would i was moved and then charles you you weren't that much longer after and within the year probably it's sad guys we haven't been to when was the last time we were all together that, in the when you room? moved was the last time we were all in the that room. is wacky probably. the night before i moved right yeah <laughs> Yeah, because I, Dylan, I've seen you occasionally when you pop yes. in to New York, Long Island area. Yeah, I saw Derek very rec- semi recently. Yep, uh, it's been a while since I've seen Dylan, but it was within the past couple of years. I went to Colorado, yeah. right? No, and no, last winter we were in Florida you. together. Yeah. 
last December. Like, yeah, last December. So less than a year oh, ago. Oh no, may have been that might have been two years ago though. No, we were in Florida together, I think. Last year, are you sure? I, I would so. say I was in New York last year. Yeah, you came over my place. What Is last really summer? Long? Last no, summer. last 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 winter. The last winter holiday I th- break. Charles, I've seen you within five months. I oh think. yeah, I think yeah. so. Charles, you were definitely in Fort Collins last spring, though, in Colorado. Oh, okay. You were. Yeah, I was. Uh, that was so, a lot of fun. So yeah, that might have been the last time I've seen you in person. I think. And I'll but probably that, see that you again in the that, winter, though. That isn't that long ago, though. No, no. Within like, I've seen both of you something. recently. It's just the three of us haven't been in, haven't the, been in the same place. Yeah, that's I the... moved out of, when my parents moved out of their house was when I saw Derek last. And that was yeah. only, like, a few months. That wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Every combination of two of us have been in the same room multiple times since. Right. It's just about getting oh, three, three of us. Yeah. has been. Yeah. Jeez, just like, have to plan another four trip. years. <laughs> yeah. It can't be four years. Dude, it, it has was, to be. It was um, We're probably past this year. Summer. It was probably in 2016 that Dylan moved. Yeah. But, Which yeah, would I make mean, it unless years. he was back and we hung out together, but I don't think that's the I case. I don't think so, man. Yeah. Nope. nope. Dude, that's, wow. a, that's criminal. Well, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't feel like... Although no, I'd said it felt long. I mean, we I don't know. (laughs) Zoom call all the time. Yeah, we've done enough of these. Played Catan, so it's never felt like. Lord knows, I have enough of Dylan time. (laughs) Charles can't get enough of me. Yeah, sure. You can't quit me, bro. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We've got to rectify that at some point, but in the meantime. Well, we were considering. We were going to go to the T Expo, but that didn't yeah. work. Yes, that got that canceled. Was, we were that all we set for that. Off. In Denver, yeah. We right. Were we go. were th- <laughs> I was like My looking backyard. into dates. That was going to be a good thing. But... That was going to be so much fun. Yeah. Did that get. I'm sure the listeners really want to hear us <laughs> plan our next trip. Yeah. I feel like that got <laughs> delayed and it's still in Denver, though, right? It got so. delayed and then it got canceled, but I think they're going to have oh. it again next year in Denver. Do oh. your listeners know you're a big tea guy? Um, Not really, I don't think. But yeah, I, I run a tea business and that was what I was doing before all this pandemic baloney. I still do it, but now it's kind of like a side hustle and I have a full time job. But. Being a He's podcast, got the best tea right? around. He's got yeah, the best a, tea around. Be, thank this you. pays yeah. all the bills for you, right, Charles? Oh yeah, I'm a, I'm an influencer. I'm an online <laughs> podcasting influencer, uh, full time. I just, you know, nothing's more exciting than a slideshow of a trip you went on. <laughs> People love sitting through that. A slideshow in an audio format. Oh yeah, we, <laughs> a slideshow where you can't even see the pictures. You know, really great oh, stuff. So, but when you go full time like Charles has, <laughs> and you start thinking of great ideas like this, that's right. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, Charles yes. is going to do director commentary over the audio file of the pictures <laughs> and describe yeah. the exact. We have I think done he's audio going to do commentary. audio commentary on the podcast episode. Like he's going to go. he's going to talk over us talking and be like, "Yeah, That's this is a part said. of the podcast." <laughs> That's exactly what Derek just. Um, That's literally <laughs> what I said. Word for You're word. describing what Derek <laughs> just. No, said it was it was my idea, guys. <laughs> All right, well. remember. That was a great idea, Dylan. That was a great idea. I was definitely not understanding what you were saying at all. (laughs) I was thinking about tennis. See? There you go. It's like, I got to get another racket. (laughs) Well, I wonder what our next trip will be. We could go back. If we were to go back, I would. How could we top it, though? We got to do something different. But, I think you just pick a place and hang out there, you know, really just kind of have a retreat. Like, I would just be like, yo, let's just rent a cabin in Rotora and stay there for a week, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we're going to rent a cabin and just stay somewhere, I think it's a long way to go to, <laughs> to pull that. Like, you could do what we did, you, me, and uh, Matt did, Charles, with the Smokies. The Smokies. Yeah, I would yeah, definitely Smoky do Mountains. that again. Well... well don't need to keep the listeners on the hook for this, no. but 
This I'm was sure they great. tuned out. A they deserve better. <laughs> this was a, a whole kind of fun, Derek. Thank you for joining us. We're gonna have of to. Of course, I had a great time. Good. Thanks, we'll Derek. Have to come up with more opportunities for you to get you back in here. Man of the people. Man of the people. That's what they call me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that will play the outro music. Thank you, everyone, for sitting through us. Hope you enjoyed another very exciting episode of the Friends Talking Fantasy Podcast. We're a little off format to share with you on the trip in the spirit of our Lord of the Rings buddy reads. So I think by the time this airs, we finished Lord of the Rings, so be on track for our next series, which is The Witcher? Do they know that yet? Did you spoil Friends Pitching Fantasy? Do they know that yet? Yes. Derek, you don't listen. No, they, they do know it. They do know it. Because it airs after our um, after our King Killer is when the Friends Pitching Fantasy goes up. So they do know. Alright. Then yeah, Witcher, I'm looking forward to it, you know. I I was real excited about getting into that. Yeah. Follow us on Twitter at the FDM Podcast One. Follow us on Instagram at the FDF Podcast. Go to the FDFpodcast.com and fill around on there. Look at the progress bars. Uh, Facebook, I don't care about. So don't, don't bother us on there. Um, see ya. See you later, everybody. Thank you Wait, for listening. Charles. Go forth and conquer, friends. <laughs>